and your calendar. Here's, here's the three requirements for your calendar. You only want to put three things in your calendar. You don't want it to be a to-do list. You put time-specific actions, as in, I'm meeting Bob at noon to have a lunch meeting to discuss the budget. I have to be at a place at a specific time, and so I'm going to put it in my calendar. Or you're going to put call Judy, call Judy with uh, the timesheet numbers. She needs to know this because she's going to run the paychecks the next day. I need to call her sometime today. It's important, so you put it in your calendar. You need to call her that day. Or maybe it's information. Maybe you're reminding yourself who you are, and so you're going to put that to remind yourself at a certain time, or maybe you remind yourself in the morning, this information, your story that you're telling yourself. Rem remember, Javon, that you're decisive and you love being organized. Remember that you love your calendar. It's what helps you to be successful, or whatever it is. Just those three things. And the reason is, I want to pull out my calendar and I want to feel like I don't have to think about should I do this or not do this. I've already done the thought process, that's why it's in there. I hold my calendar as sacred. If I put it in there, it's because I need to do it at that time, on that day. I don't have to think about it anymore. And then, if there's nothing on my calendar, I can immediately go to my master next action list and start to categorize it and do the most important thing on that list. But if it's on my calendar, I just do it. I don't even think about it. I don't try to plan around it. And I hold it as sacred, as in, uh, it's, it's, it's so valuable, I make sure it happens. If your boss needed to meet with you, or your best client needed to meet with you, those are things that you don't have to think about. But so many times that when we give ourselves important things to do, we think, oh, is it really important? And, and you'll, you'll cancel your own meeting with yourself, <laughs> which is a shame. Make it urgent, because you say it's urgent. Don't be a slave to somebody else's belief that it's urgent. You determine what's urgent based on it's leading you closer to your clear goals that make you excited. When you do that, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. And the reason it gives you flexibility is you have to do the things that are on your calendar. That's true. And if, and, and, or you could even say you get to do the things on your calendar because it's going to make sure that you win. There's, there's a little bit of a difference between get to and have to, right? So you can start telling that new story. I get to do these things because I've already thought this through and if I just do what I know I should do to get where I know I want to be, doing the little actions, I'm going to be successful. And then it gives you the freedom with all that other time to do the next most important thing. And man, if you're always doing what's most important, it feels great. It's, it's, it's a new kind of flexibility. So let's, let's uh, process a bit. Process into those seven buckets. So look at your actions, and this might be what you're talking about, Karen. Here's, here's your options. If, if what you're doing, what your action is, if it's simplified all the way down to the next action already, but on your, with your next actions, whether it's on your project side or your next action side, if it's a next action, if you can do it less than two minutes, I want you to circle it. Circle the whole thing, if you can do it in less than two minutes, the next action. If you're waiting for somebody, if you need to wait for someone else to do something before that can move forward, then put a W by it and circle the W. If it takes longer than two minutes and it's your responsibility, you're going to do it, put next and circle the next. And if it's a thing that needs to happen on a specific day or a specific time on a specific day or it's information that you need to know on a specific day, then put CAL by it and circle the calendar and circle that CAL. So this simulates you processing it into the right bucket. And what I want you to do is the things that you've circled, get, get those things done as soon as you can. Maybe you can do those at lunch. They're less than two minutes. Why not? Get some stuff done. Or after today or Monday morning. You want to get those done. Why not? Now, part of your assignment is going to be finishing this list that we started today. Yeah, Karen, what were you going to say? Oh, it might be different you than want yours. To keep your job. Right. Um, well, is keeping your job important? It depends on if 
<laughs> yeah, it depends. Yeah. So what happens? She said, what happens if the what's important to you is not the same as what's important to your boss or your supervisor or your manager or whatever? And that's a good question. I would say that if you're really clear about what's most important to you, you're more likely able to weave it in what's important to the people that tell you what to do or that you have to please to keep your job, for example. And you're also more likely to figure out how to get what you want by getting what somebody else wants. So if you know what you want, if you know you're really clear what, what you want, oftentimes you can help other people, you can get other people to help you to get it by framing it in such a way that I'm going to help you get what you want and so it's going to help me get what I want. So for example, if you need some, some time alone to be productive, you can say, I'm committed to being productive so I can serve you best, boss. And because of that, I'm going to need 15 minutes of uninterrupted time so that I can get more done for you. Right? So what you wanted was 15 minutes of uninterrupted time and you framed it in such a way that you're going to help them, which is true. But it's going to help you actually get it when you speak to them in that, in that sort of way. So if you're clear about what you want, a lot of times you can get what you want while telling them you're giving them what they want. Does that make sense? Sometimes it's yeah. co contradictory. I'm just thinking about it this way. Can I they totally pulled yeah. you. They totally derailed you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we're going to go into that a little later, yeah. how to deal with distractions and interruptions and how to say no. And the first step, though, before we get there, because I will deal with that, the first step, though, is to know what you want. Because you, if it's possible to do both, you wouldn't even know how to do it unless you were clear about what you wanted. So you at least start with what's most important. It gives you a possibility, or more of a possibility, actually accomplishing it. That's where you start. And then you got to just do what you got to do, to be honest. We're in the middle of craziness a lot of times, with expectations that are beyond what you're actually able to do. And if that's the case, you just do what you can do. And these tools that I'm giving you, though, it equips you to do at least a little more and be a little more effective in that space than you were before. Before we go to lunch, let me, is that okay if I get into that a little bit more a little bit later? Okay. The next step is you want to remind yourself. You need to remind yourself. In the reminding part, you need to look at your calendar first every day. That means if you have Outlook, you need to get someone to help you switch the settings so that the email doesn't come up first. That's a trap. Don't fall into that trap. It's so tempting. Oh, emails. Maybe I'll just do a couple. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> get the calendar to come up. Don't you look at those emails. And someone may say, but I have to check my emails at 6 in the morning because my client's on the East Coast. Well, do your, figure out what's most important first. Maybe that means you have to figure out what's most important the night before. Maybe you have to get up at 5.30 and spend a half an hour on yourself before you get dragged around by everybody else. Do what it takes, because you're that important. Calendar first, action list second, and then you review the other buckets as needed. So the last step is doing it. Do it, and this is how you do it. The point of all this is to do the best thing at any given moment. So here's how to decide. Well, the first thing is you open up your calendar, and that lets you know what you need to be doing at a specific, specific time. And then, all the other times, you have this big list of to-dos. So the first way you know what to do is context. Am I in the right place to do this with the tools that I need? If it's work that you need to do on your computer and you're not at your computer, well, you can't do that stuff. Easy enough. If you don't have enough time to start, you, know, you need to meet with somebody for an hour, you don't have an hour, well, you can't do that. If you need to make phone calls and you're, you're at a really quiet doctor's office visit, you, know, you can't really make phone calls there, you say, so you don't do that. You pull out your reading and you do that there by context. Second thing is time. How long would this take? Do I have enough time? With each of your action steps, I would write down how much time you think it's going to take. And I would never plan more than an hour for any task. I mean, hours push it. 20 minutes is a good block of time. If you work hard and fast on anything, you can get a ton done. But an hour is, over an hour, it's just, it often it's unrealistic for anybody. Resist the planning of doing six hours of, you know, any day more than six hours of planning. 
Energy, do I have enough mental or physical energy? Normal Americans are most uh, active mentally about 10.30 a.m. and we're least active mentally about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So if you come back from a big company luncheon and you've had a couple glasses of wine at 2 o'clock, you wouldn't hold a meeting where you're trying to inspire other people <laughs> and teach them. That would be the worst time, 2 o'clock. And priority, what action will give me the highest payoff right now? Does your priorities. So when you get a chance, what you do on your action lift is you rank them. What's number one importance all the way down to the last importance, one till whenever? It's easier to act yourself into a better way of feeling than to feel yourself into a better way of acting. It's going to feel good once you start to act in alignment with what's most important. But don't wait to change until you start to feel good. Because remember, feelings are horrible masters. They're great indicators. They, they indicate what, what you're focusing on, but they're horrible masters. So here, here's one last step I'll give you, and then we're going to take lunch. Friday at 2 o'clock is a great way to process everything. Go over all the rest of your buckets. And the reason is uh, it's still, everything's still fresh in your mind and you get a chance to, to touch base with people before the weekend. So process all your stuff. All the loose papers, all the notes that need to be go from into your inbox into next action or calendar or waiting for somebody. Uh, go to your calendar events, make sure they're accurate. All your thoughts, get them in your system. Don't keep them in your head. Update your projects, update your actions, update your waiting fors. Make sure that the people that you're waiting for know that you're waiting for them. And they know exactly what you need. I had a client that, that he, they were waiting for uh, this report and the person that he was waiting for thought it was his responsibility and he thought it was her responsibility and they were both waiting and emailing each other. You got it done? You got it done? You got it done? You got it? You know, it's just like, it was ridiculous. Nothing was getting done because they didn't know who was waiting for what. And then some days, wrap them up as if you were going on a trip. Feels good. You can actually enjoy your weekend knowing that everything's in the right bucket. Still, still fresh on your mind, you can follow up with people. And the point of this system is you can know that the one thing you're doing is what you need to be doing. And it's okay not to be doing what you're not doing. That's the wonderful thing. So when we come back, we're going to experiment with multitasking. We're going to see experimentally if it's really helping you the way that you think it might be helping you, or maybe the possibility you are, you're the one that's holding yourself back from being productive because of how you do things. And we're going to look at how to say no, and we're also going to look at some other ways to, to free yourself and organize and to, um, what's the last thing we're going to do? Oh, we're going to do some goal setting. Remember, if you don't have a clear goal, you're a slave to other people's goals. So with that, let's take a lunch break. Come back at 1.15. 1.15. Have a good lunch, everybody.